Hi, everyone. I'm Gold Derby News and Features Editor Ray Richmond, and I'm here with Nina Ruscio, the production designer on the new Paramount Plus limited series reboot of the 1987 feature Fatal Attraction. Just a little aside before we dive into your work on the new series, Nina, um, I'm just wondering if you saw the original film with Michael Douglas, Glenn Close, and Ann Archer back in the day. Um, I did. And if so, and if so what, you know, yes, so you did. And what you thought of it uh, at the time, I was married to my first wife at the time, and it scared the living hell out of me, um, which I mm -hmm. guess was exactly what it was supposed to do. Mm hmm well, it's a morality tale in many ways, and it's told um, in such an iconic film that it was intense to be on the heels of that film. Um, very important to respect the fact that it really sort of lives in the subconscious of a lot of people, see you included. There are many people that have not seen the film, and I actually think you can see the series without seeing the film. But those that have, there's little Easter eggs throughout to pay homage to the original film, but it had deep psychic weight at the time and was really controversial. Very much. And, what, and I guess to some degree, you're, the current the current series is by its nature a little bit controversial too, just because it deals with some of the same subjects. Yeah, I don't think that you can live in that same soup without being affected by um, by, by those issues, the issue, issues of misogyny, the issues of mental health, and all of those things, if the if the film um, did anything, it act if it if it did anything, it actually created a lot of discussion amongst people, and a lot of dynamic discussion amongst different people of different genders and different power structures. The idea of the uh, of 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 the power dynamic of women in the workplace, and those kind of things were very much a part of the dynamic of the first film entertainment for sure but touching kind of crossing the wires of a lot of psychic intensity of the time and i would say that it seems as if people are triggered this time around too by a lot of the similar issues um and at what point is the the series responsible for redressing those issues and at what point is it entertainment? It's a very, very um, vibrant discussion that people are having about, about the series. Uh, I just wanted to backtrack a little bit before we dive in and talk about your work on uh, Fatal Attraction, Nina. Uh, in terms of your own production design career, you've been at this since at least the early 1990s, at least as far as IMDb is concerned. Uh, and the sheer range of your projects is really impressive. Everything from Nash Bridges to When Billy Beat Bobby uh, to the ahead of its time HBO film Normal uh, mm -hmm. to more recently yeah. Shameless and The Flight Attendant. Um, what do you look for before saying yes to a project? Or is it is it a matter of if they want you, you want them? Uh, have you ever turned anything down? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I but this. I think that the guiding principle for me, if I'm attracted to the people, if I'm attracted to the project, I have a lot of projects that I work, I, I work with a lot of the same people over and over and over again, um, because it's such a, it's a safe space, first of all, and it's also simplifies life because you really can say two words and then all of a sudden you know what, you're need, what you need to do. Um, and that, those relationships, I treasure those relationships because that's a rarity in this business, the kind of level of loyalty and the level of, of trust that comes with working with the same people. Me, similarly with my crew, I've worked with a lot of the same people for, for a lot of years and decades even. And th those are irreplaceable in a business that's completely transitory, like going to different summer camp every job. Um, having that uh, having those as a reason to take a job, many times that motivates me. Um, I'm also uh, extremely eclectic, as you pointed out. The range of my work is really across the board from from broad kids comedies to um, subtle indie movies to big feature films and um, and then now in the last decade or more, uh, I've loved soaking in the 
golden age of television, um, the new golden age of television, and have enjoyed a collaboration with people like John Wells and um, and even Silver Tree. This is my third project with Silver Tree, which I which who I adore. Um, and actually, it was her entree to meet Alexandra Cunningham that uh, that actually brought me to this project, Fatal Attraction. Uh, and uh, those that's uh, I um, I'm I'm seduced by the 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 people. Um, and if you are uh, picking the right people, then you end up in the right projects. New golden age. I like that too. And I think, I think you're right. It is a new golden age. Did, um, as we just discussed though, did you have any trepidation about taking the fatal attraction job, Nina, given, you know, how potentially divisive the subject and controversial and, or did that maybe even attract you more to it? I was attracted to Alexandra's uh, t intention to actually reset the story in the contem in, in contemporary time and sort of look at aspects of Alex's reasons for her circumstance and Dan's reasons for his circumstance and the choices that they each make for their circumstance were not really deeply explored in the original film and there was a lot of controversy to the way the original film was was the re reshooting of the original film was ended so sort of addressing all of those concerns and addressing the state of mental health in the country today um, those were very much, uh, those were attractive aspects to what Alexandra was telling me when she was talking about how she was going to be resetting this in contemporary time. Uh, the issues of misogyny. Uh, yes, I was trepidatious for step to step in a project of, of this, uh, of this historical impact cinematically. Um, um, but I felt like it was in the right hands. Let's talk about the project a little more in terms of what you did in it. Um, was there an overall look and tone you were looking for, looking to create going in it? Uh, we see Dan at the beginning living, you know, this high end world and and before it all goes away, uh, you know, in, in his favorite restaurant. And we have lots of, lots of the giant, sleek, modern spaces and high ceilings. It seemed like that was you were really trying to establish his high end world. Yeah, well, both of both. Uh, both Dan and Alex, and in contrast to each other, they're both trying to live their best life. Alex comes down to Los Angeles from Seattle to start over, to start fresh. Dan is rising, thinks he's going to become a judge. Beth is growing from a starter home to a hopefully forever family home. Um, each of them are are rising in their own personal emotion and emotional success. And Pretty much every single one of them um, gets everything knocked out from under them, from a couple of ba very bad choices that take place. So, setting that world and also paying homage to the to the to the to the significance and the kind of subterranean psychological memory that everybody has about that film for people that are of that generation. Um, but setting it within the context of today, the, all of those things were important to the design choices. Putting Alex in an environment that um, made it feel like she was coming down with a, a fresh start to an ideal, idealized life in Los Angeles with a beautiful view of downtown Los Angeles, <laughs> living in a loft, <laughs> which would have been the the coolest thing to have done in that time period. Um, and for me, from a design perspective, it also paid respect and homage to, homage to the meat market area that Alex lived in the original film. And that was critical because it's sistered. You can't have the one to a certain degree without the other. The idea of living your uh, living in an urban environment and um, becoming her best self, those were really important. The simplicity of Alex's loft in the film and the blanched palette of her space in the original film and the way that we treated it in the series in her loft environment to create an, an environment that's not triggering for her, that's not, that's got a blanched palette that's that would present as if she has everything under control. That was very, very important. And that 
does two things at once. It does, it tells of Alex's mental state and it also plays homage to the original film. The bathroom is also an homage to the original film. If you see the bathroom in the original film and you see the bathroom that we did um, here on, in the series, because the horror of the memory of the bathtub was key. So those little bits of historic evidence of the film are layered in throughout. And then Dan's world, um, within the normalcy of the municipal world, he's king of the hill. He thinks he's king of the hill. Um, and he uh, makes a few choices and circumstances unfold in such a way so that pretty much he's buckled at the knees and everything changes. But setting those two worlds, the normalcy of the, the municipal world and all of that set, everything that was built, every all of that was built, the courtroom, the courtroom hallway, the elevator. Yeah, all I was going to say, you know, and you're a storyteller as a production designer in this as much as as much as the, the writer and the director. Um, you know, a couple of the build ads that I think that are especially impressive, as you just alluded to, are Dan uh, Gallagher seeing, you know, his uh, his courtroom world, and I know you built uh, the courtroom, the courthouse, and even the hallways um, uh, from scratch as build outs, and they look incredibly authentic. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the loft, as you alluded to, uh, about uh, that Alex lives in. Mm -hmm. You're clearly terrific at your job and very thorough. Oh, well, I love my crew. I love my people. I love my job. Um, it's a, it's a beautiful um, it's a very satisfying experience to be able to tell stories visually and to collaborate with artists, uh, you know, excellent directors and producers and cinematographers uh, that are that to tell a story visually um, and to be background. My job is background, but my job is tr truly to g house um, and subtly impose upon the viewer the psychological states of the characters and the the settings um i'm glad that you feel that i'm a visual storyteller because that's what i hope to do and i hope to supplement and complement anything written on the on the page um and the arc of a story through the visual arc of the story as well because you really should be able to watch a film or a series and and um, even as a production designer, like a, a, as an interesting um, exercise to really watch it with no sound, with no dialogue, and really be able to tell another story, to be able to tell the same story that the director and the producers are trying to, to say. Um, it's super satisfying and it works. I know you don't do found locations, Nina, even though those would clearly be a lot cheaper and easier. Uh, but only interiors and exteriors that are built from scratch. I learned that today at ninarusio.com in the blah, blah, blah section. Um, oh, my goodness. That is an ancient website. You'll, there'll be a new website in, in a few months. You'll see that. But I imagine that's still your mindset. Uh, it is. Is it, is, it, is it just a need to be completely authentic? Like, not necessarily in a control freaky way. I mean, if I do say control freaky, I would say that with the utmost respect. Uh, yeah, no, I feel like my job is very much as a chameleon to um, to come in and uh, kind of absorb what the project is and then and then the, and then express it. Um, and there are multiple uh, layers to and people that actually become part of the kind of crown of mind that's happening when you imagine a film or a TV series taking place. And so getting that right is really very, it's actually really very selfless. Um, and I don't mean that in a, you know, fake humble way. I mean it really, my job is to filter how to tell a story visually in the best possible way. And what's fabulous about my job is every single job is really different. The chemistry of the of the ideas and the chemistry of the people and the storytelling and the kind of reverberation that happens when when we're all telling the same story, it's truly exciting. It's truly exciting. And so I feel like there's ever newness in every single project that I do because the possibilities are in infinite. They're infinite. And it's all this 
curious soup that happens. Every single job is new and unique and, uh, and engaging and exciting. And I love it. Well, that's why you're good at what you do is you're, is everything you're still, you still get excited by every project. Oh, yeah. You're not mailing it in. And I, I know you received your, your first Emmy nomination last year for the, uh, the flight attendant. Uh, mm -hmm. If you're being objective, which I know is probably impossible. Um, what was it about your design for that show you think that made it nomination worthy? I think that there's a, there's a, I think it's classic that a show that gets seen has a possibility of being nominated. So that was a popular show. I think you'd have to, you'd have to start with that. Um, people saw it um, and it was intentionally a very visually showy show. We traveled to Berlin. I built sets that were extreme. There was very, we went to Iceland. There were, there were a lot of the elements of that project that led to it being noticed. Um, I actually would like to say that we work really hard all the time, whether we're noticed or not. And um, so it was, it, there's a, there's a, there's a synergy that happens when everyone is looking at a show. It had been nominated the previous year, um, a different designer in New York. The whole show had come to Los Angeles and um, all new sets and all new locations and all new builds and everything, a new mind palace and everything um, came. Th that was what I got to do the second season. So, so I didn't feel like as a second season, it was a compromise. I felt like it was a new show um within the historical boundaries of what the first season had established so but I, I but I think that every show that me and my crew do I it was very nice to be nominated because we work so hard <laughs> um and I would hope that every show that we do would stand the test of being n vetted and attractive and nominatable um, just because that means we're doing our job in a way that perhaps uh, just really satisfies the audience. I think Fatal Attraction is one of those jobs where it should satisfy the aud audience in a way that maybe goes unnoticed. It's a little less showy in that way. Um, uh, so maybe that's why in answer. Um, you're, right, you're right. You don't necessarily want to be known you, as background. You you certainly want to tell the story, but you don't necessarily want to be too front and center mm -hmm. um, as a production designer. And uh, but in terms of storytelling, um, I liked the fact, or at least I, I noticed the fact that you weren't interested in making Alex's loft look like someone with borderline personality disorder might live there. Um, you know, you you it was it was. Uh, trendy and modern and, and looked great. And um, I know that's part of this new, you know, the, the new iteration of this concept was we weren't judging her exclusively. It wasn't like, oh my God, this crazy person, boy, you better watch what, who you get involved with. Could be a crazy person who's going to stalk you and you're going to have to end up killing them. That We didn't get that. We didn't get that from looking at her loft. Yeah, I mean, she's really just a broken person trying to do right. She's really trying, she's right, she's really just trying to come to Los Angeles and start fresh and not have back images of what she was, in fact, how she presents to the world. So for me, her loft was more a part of her pure slate, the presentation of her, the the purity of her intention was really, really genuinely to improve her life. She's a heartbreaking character, honestly. We're gonna wrap up here in a minute, um, uh, Nina. Um, you also worked on Shameless and that seemed like, oh my God, that would have been a whole lot of fun to work on. Oh, I love that job. And I loved the people and I loved watching that family. I mean, all of those people, they've all grown up while I was there. <laughs> I was on that project for 11 seasons. It was a fantastic, job collaborating with John Wells from the beginning to the end and um, very working with a beautiful array of directors from Mark Mylod was on it originally, Chris Chulak, um, uh, Regina King, um, Silvertree, that's how I met Silvertree originally. But the kind of living and breathing that show, it's an entirely different aesthetic. Uh, and uh, the looking very carefully at the reality of 
um, the world that the Gallaghers live in. By the way, it's the Gallaghers, the same name. It was very, very bizarre to have the Gallagher, oh, be wow. the Gallagher house in Shameless and the Gallagher house in Fatal Attraction. It was a big, bad, weird deja vu. Um, but the, but I, I, I loved m sort of maturing the design of that show on Shameless because uh, it's a, it's a, it's a very specific, the, the beauty of ugly was the aesthetic of that show and the honesty of the, the way people live in that neck of the woods. Um, but also doing that show in Los Angeles, shooting that show 90% in Los Angeles with just a couple of weeks in Chicago every year, every season was intense to respect the aesthetic of Chicago within and carve it out of bits of Los Angeles, favorite bits of Los Angeles. Um, it felt like you would feel as if you, something about the job felt as if you would, if you go to a bar, a, the the regular bar lifestyle was the life of that job had its own um it's like i was with that family for this mm -hmm. big chunk of time um and it, it's irreplaceable the people and the friendships of that time are, are pretty beautiful beautiful and, and the beauty of ugly i love that beauty well, of ugly? well 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 put um with that, we're out of time. The limited series reboot of Fatal Attraction streams on Paramount Plus with the final two of the eight episodes premiering on May 28th. Nina Ruscio, good luck this Emmy season and thanks for visiting with us today at Gold Derby. Thank you so much. It was a really genuine pleasure. Really, thanks for taking the time. Thank you.